Hey guys, welcome to Dad's Dad. Today we're going to be talking about the snoo. We're going to give it a good honest review. You know, I'm not a super technical guy, but I know how to work my way around computers. Uh, I use one every day for work, cell phones, video games, all that stuff. You know, we all grew up in the 90s. Uh, I'm 31 years old. It's my son, Leo. And um, honestly, super, super important for us. Important for me, important for my wife. It's important for him, most of all. Um, so today we're going to talk about the snoo. I'm going to give you the pluses, the minuses. We got the snoo before he was born. We knew we were going to use it. Sleep was something we wanted to invest in. It's very expensive, but there's always some uh, seasonal deals that they have going on. And I think on sale, it's a good value. Uh, I really do, especially with the resale value. So if you kind of factor that in, in the, in the total cost of ownership, I think it makes sense. Um, so today we're going to talk about that high level and I'll show some examples. Again, if you are new to my channel, uh, like and subscribe. I'll also link below to the website where you can take a look to see if there are any deals going on right now. If you're a member of the Armed Services or a former member of the Armed Services, thank you for your service. Uh, you get a pretty good discount on this as well. So I definitely would take a look if that applies to you. All right, stay tuned for the review. So today we're talking snoo. Let me hand the little guy over. All right, so let's start with the pros. It helped to get him uh, to a five hour stretch of sleep super quickly. So we started using him, uh, we started using the snoo with him right when he turned about four weeks old. Uh, it helped put him back to sleep when he did wake up. It got to a point where my wife and I felt super comfortable with the swaddle setup and the secureness of him being on his back that we ended up moving him to the adjacent room um, right next to our bedroom. Uh, it did help us. He would wake up a lot and be kind of loud. He was kind of a loud sleeper. Not that he snored, but he'd coo and he would kind of not cry, but he might whimper um, to put himself back to sleep with the snooze help, of course. Uh, that would wake us up instantly. As new parents, we were just like at the edge of our seat constantly, like wanting to make sure he was okay, wanting to make sure he was safe. Obviously, you know, SIDS is on the mind. We hear about it um, in all the, all the avenues that we did research on getting something that would help solve the sleep. Um, crack that nut, it's huge. Um, so it helped give us confidence to put him in his own room, that's for sure. The way that the swaddle secures in, and I'll show a quick link right now. it clicks in and actually the machine won't function if it's not clicked in securely. So that was super relieving for my wife and I. Um, you're able to elevate the snoo. We didn't know this. Uh, a lot of folks have trouble with acid reflux or reflux in a baby. We didn't have that, knock on wood, uh, but it's definitely something that's very prevalent. Customer service with the snoo is very good. And one of the things they recommend doing if you don't want to buy the leg extenders, which they do sell, but you've already kind of invested enough money in the machine. So one of the things that a lot of the mom groups and the dad groups uh, on Facebook would talk about is just putting a couple of cans underneath two of the legs on one side, and it would just pitch it enough, maybe 15 to 25 degree pitch, depending on the type of can you use. If you use a tuna can or like a tomato sauce can, um, it would definitely help elevate and, and create a pitch that would definitely help with sleep. We just did that even though he didn't have reflux because we looked, felt like it was more comfortable for him than just laying flat on his back. All right, let's talk about my favorite uh, part of the snoo and being an owner of the snoo, the app. The app is incredible. It's very sophisticated in regards to tracking his sleep and his wake-ups. I will say that we use the app primarily um, when we went to doctor's appointments, when we would talk to people on the phone, we would just look at each other and we'd be exhausted. Now, both my, my wife and I took the maximum amount of uh, parental leave that our uh, companies offered. So we'd be so tired and we would be like, I have no idea when we put him down or when he woke up, um, especially two or three hours into the day. Um, we would use the app. We could go back, it would track the app. Week by week, it gives you a week summary of how you're doing and trending week over week and month over month. Uh, those things were very valuable to have. Uh, not to mention you could control the app from your phone. So if you put the baby to bed or for a nap, which we didn't start using the snoo for naps until much later, 
if we have a second child, we're going to use the snoo for naps much earlier on. Um, you're able to, we, we have a two, two story house, so we were able to put him upstairs in the snoo, have the monitor on, and if we could see that he's starting to move, shift before he actually wakes up, we were able to escalate the snoo motion uh, with the app on our phone. And that was something that was very seamless and flawless and worked really well. If you have a good Wi-Fi in your house, it's going to be very easy to control um, from anywhere in the home. Uh, if you're somebody who's kind of concerned about the security um, with Wi-Fi and you're not somebody, you know, if you're somebody who has uh, a baby monitor that's a closed circuit, that's just um, not using the Internet whatsoever, there is the uh, ability to use the button as well. So you can walk up, put your baby in, hit the button, it will turn on. The snow will still do all the things, cycle through the different levels as your baby gets upset. Um, that's super valuable as well uh, for people who are really concerned about that. I'm not as concerned uh, with that kind of stuff uh, yet, but it's definitely something that I know is top of mind. Cons, let's talk about some of the things that uh, were negative with the snow. Um, I would say the thing that bothered us the most was that he outgrew it so fast. Uh, our son was on the larger side when he was born. He was nine pounds, three ounces. He was uh, 22 inches long when he was born. So he's a big baby uh, or on the bigger side. Um, he outgrew it. We probably should have put him, at, pulled him out of it at four and a half months. We kept him in it until five months. We really pushed it because he liked it so much and he was getting such good sleep in the snoo. Um, we were really hoping to get six months out of it. I can tell you right now, he's just a couple days over six months. There's no chance he can fit in the snoo. Um, his head would be rubbing against the top. His feet would be rubbing against the bottom. And he's probably getting close to that weight limit as well. Um, so yeah, baby outgrew it at, for short five months. Uh, there is a weaning mode. The second thing that we want to talk about, uh, it was tough to get him into the traditional crib after that. We did have a little bit of trouble. He did love the swaddle. So some babies hate to swaddle. Uh, so their parents use um, different types of swaddle uh, solutions and then still zip them into the snoo, but have the arms free, for example. Um, we didn't, he loved having his arms down. He got the best sleep when we did that. Uh, right up until he was four and a half, five months old, we kept him in there. Uh, again, probably not something that I would recommend because we did have a tough time transitioning him to the crib, but I can tell you now, it's a couple days over six months. We did sleep training around five months. He's been sleeping through the night uh, pretty well. So, it, you know, you get there, but I think maybe it's a little bit of a tougher transition uh, when you're so heavily uh, reliant on the snoo for sleep. Um, the weaning mode doesn't allow it to escalate as high as it did when he was younger. So um, hopefully that you know transitions him closer to being in a crib, which obviously doesn't have the oscillation or the, the built-in sound machine. Um, when the baby does fall asleep during the weaning mode, it, the motion stops. It's not consistent throughout the night. That's another thing that was surprising, and a lot of people don't talk about it. Uh, the motion stays on uh, on the baseline level throughout the whole night. Uh, so the baby really is constantly in a state of being soothed while they sleep. And I think that definitely helps get you those longer stretches. I know when we would check back on the app, we would look back, you know, a week or two when he was having, um, not having like a mental growth spur or any type of uh, leap. And we would be like, oh, remember when he slept five hours straight? That's amazing. Cause now he's only sleeping three hours straight. And some of my friends uh, that are having kids right now, they'd be like, your kids slept for three hours straight. How? And I'd be like, you have to get the snoo, just invest in it. Um, another negative uh, thing that we talked about right in the beginning, obviously, is the price point. It's really expensive. Uh, it's a huge investment, to be honest. It's one of the most expensive things we bought, period, um, in prepping for him coming. Um, the only thing we spent more money on was the stroller car seat solution. Um, other than that, the snoo was by far the most expensive uh, piece of baby equipment that we bought. I will say if you factor in the price, especially if you're able to get it on a discount or a sale, um, and then you factor in reselling it at the end, and kind of look at that as your total investment into the sleep uh, solution that is this new, with the app bundled in as well, that's free to download if you have it, I think it's worth it, uh, bottom line. It's expensive for sure, but if you value sleep, and it's really just you and your wife, for me um, and my wife, our families live a couple states away, we're in the Northeast, we're, we live in New York, um, so they're not too, too far. They're, you know, a, a, a good long drive away, um, but we don't have somebody down the road that we can just say, hey, can you come give us a, a little bit of a break? So for us, the snoo was that. Uh, it provided us with that break and that sense of relief where we knew he wasn't gonna roll over. There was no um, height and elevated chance of him getting hurt or anything like that because he is so secure in the snoo. Plus with the baby monitor and the app, we really knew what was going on at all times. 
Um, so we talked about the price being a con. Do I recommend it overall? Yes. I think that the SNU is only going to get better. I'm really looking forward to see what they come out with next. Happiest Baby, the company, um, the doctor behind it, the books, all that stuff. It's really, really good, really good stuff. Uh, definitely the best uh, I've seen right now uh, on the market. I think I, I'm personally, I, I love the technology aspect of it. I love the smart um app i love the smartphone app i love the way that it knows when your baby is crying and it hears it through the microphone and escalates it through the cycle um the white noise sounds are very unique you wouldn't think that a blow dryer for example sound would put your baby to sleep but he loved it he absolutely loved it um one other thing that it you can cost really customize it to your child the baseline that comes with the snoo um, baseline setting when it's oscillating in the white noise wasn't enough for our son. Uh, didn't do much for him. So we would escalate his baseline to level one and then level two. Um, so when you put him in, it would out of the bat start at level two. Uh, then it would go three, four, and then cycle back down. That was something that when he was a little older, going through some of his mental leaps, we took advantage of. He absolutely loved it, and it really helped get help us get an extra couple of hours of sleep. Also, the trust that it built with my wife specifically. I was kind of ready to move him into his, his own room after a month or two. But my wife definitely uh, felt more comfortable. And then, of course, I felt more comfortable. Um, happy wife, happy life. Uh, I felt more comfortable having him move to his other room as well. Uh, we both felt that, you know, he was still right there. It's the adjacent room to our bedroom. Uh, but we could hear him. We could hear the machine. We could get the app alerts on our phone and we with the baby monitor as well. We, we just were ready for that. And it did help us get those, take advantage of those longer stretches. You know, you're like, oh, my baby slept five hours. That means you slept five hours. No, it doesn't. It means you finally got your baby down. You're exhausted, but your adrenaline's kind of pumping and you lay into bed and you're on your phone and you're just kind of winding down. You're talking about stuff and you're kind of delirious from the lack of sleep. And it might take you 45 minutes to an hour to fall asleep. Now, like I was talking about, your baby will wake up periodically and they're not fully awake. They're just going through a sleep cycle, in and out of a sleep cycle. So they're gonna start waking up, they're gonna start making noise, start cooing, uh, mumbling, and, and they're not really awake. Their eyes may even be closed, um, maybe even a couple cries or, or, or um, moans, but the snoo will pick up on those noises and it will start to escalate and put your baby back to sleep. You're waking up when that happens. Uh, Getting used to sleeping next to the snoo, is, it's loud. Uh, so that takes a little bit of, of training for yourself as well. So, you know, even though your baby's getting that five hour stretch, you're maybe getting, so you lose 45 minutes in the front, in the middle you're waking up somewhere, and then toward the end, your baby is, is you know, escalated to a cry, so you're kind of up right away and you're, you're going. So, you know, you're still gaining, you know, in total maybe, maybe three and a half hours of good solid sleep in a five hour window. But you compare that to when your baby is not getting a five hour window. If your baby's getting a three hour window max, now you're looking at two hours, two hours and 15 minutes maximum of sleep. So you're buying yourself an extra hour to two hours every time. And uh, that's something that I think is worth the money. So if you think it's worth the money too, hit the link below. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe, you know, give me some comments. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of stuff. I'd like to hear what you guys want to hear about. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them as well. I'm not a professional by any means. Um, I'm not even in uh, the sleep baby industry or anything like that. I'm just kind of a regular dude um, who's interested in some of the tech that is now available for our kids. And you know, so our first son, I hope to have more children down the road. So I'll be reviewing all kinds of the, uh, things that we chose and some of the things we passed on. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.